Hello, City Church family. Pastor Dustin with you here today. It is just so awesome that you're able to join us. Uh, we're just getting ready for some awesome things that are up and coming today. Don't forget, as you're watching this service, make sure to drop us a comment down below. Whether you're on a premiere, you're catching this later on. Also, in that description down below, there's a whole bunch of links. It is material for you guys, things to help you out. We want to hear from you as well. There's ways to ask for prayer requests and all sorts of different manners of things down there. I'm Pastor Heather, and it's really great to see you here today. We are excited for what God is doing, and we mm -hmm. invite you to go ahead and prepare even for communion today. Mm -hmm. So find a cracker or a piece of bread, um, some juice or water even, and get ready to join in with that part of us later in the service. Right now, though, we're going to go ahead and join in with worship and the word. Into the night, pointing a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones, I tried with all my might, I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. This bag of bones. We're just going to continue again here with our attitude of worship and praise. And we just do so with another part of our lives, not just our voices, not just our spirit. We do it in our finances as well. We're going to read God's word here real quick, how we do tithes and offerings here at City Church. You notice there's some giving stations around the room, out in the lobby as well. Um, there's an electronic one there for those of you joining us online. Just jump right down to that description box below. There's a link for giving in there as well. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to jump in right now with a loud voice together. Everybody read this, and we're going to read some scripture to declare this morning. Here we go. This is what the Lord has commanded from what you have. Take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze. Come on. That's a showing a willingness. Everyone who is willing. It's in our heart. It's something that we want to do as well. Here we go. This is the next scripture. But the king replied, I will not sacrifice to the Lord my burnt offering that costs me nothing. Wow. Come on, sacrifice is not sacrifice if it's easy, right? There's a reason. There's a definition behind that word. Here we go. Here's our prayer this morning. As I give in today's offering, I reflect on the goodness and favor of God toward me. 
I commit to support the work of his kingdom without reservation or hesitation. I give generously as an expression of gratitude for the blessings I have and continue to receive from the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, that is our prayer today, Father. Lord, we want that to be in our heart today, oh God. We want to be willing, willing to give, oh God, willing to sacrifice, oh God, because we are so grateful uh, for what you have actually entrusted to us. <laughs> Lord, as we read your word, we understand that you own it all anyway, and you just entrust some of that to us, and so we are thankful for that. Lord, just bless the giver today, Lord, and what you have purposed on us, and in our own hearts, what we purpose, oh God. Lord, um, uh, again, to further your kingdom. Lord, so that your kingdom goes to the corners of the earth so that people can get to know you, Lord. It doesn't just, when we give, oh God, it doesn't just support this house, but it supports outside of this house as well. To those that are taking uh, your word to the streets, Lord, to the streets in other countries, oh God. And we just thank you for blessing that work as well, Lord, again, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Isaiah chapter 61 is a prophetic message um, uh, by the this just, I love Isaiah. Isaiah, he's one of the most prolific t uh, prophets of the Old Testament. And um, many of his, uh, many prophecies regarding Christ happened here. In Isaiah 61, this, just to give you a little bit of a background, um, <clears throat> when Jesus launched his earthly ministry, um, we talked about when Jesus was baptized, I'm just giving you the gospel narrative, the way the Bible kind of it chronologically uh, accounts this stuff. Jesus goes to be baptized with John. The Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus, and, uh, and, and he starts his earthly ministry. Then he would go out to the wilderness, and he says for 40 days, and uh, he, he fasted, and he was in the wilderness, and, 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 God, and, and he was tested by the devil. He was tempted and tested by the devil, not easy and all that. Maybe you may be very familiar with the story where Satan tells Jesus, if you're truly the son of God, you know, right now you're so hungry. And at 40 days he hasn't eaten, and, uh, and he comes in with a Big Mac and says, hey, you want one? I was like, well, why don't you let your father in heaven that you brag so much about uh, give you some large fries and a soda to go with that? And Jesus says, no, 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 no. You cannot test the Lord your God. You, I don't mean remember the story. I made it up a little bit just to get your interest here. But he, the Bible just says that he asked him to the Lord to, to tinge the water into uh, the, the stone rocks into bread because he knew Jesus was so hungry. And, and Satan works very much the same way whenever he wants to, to test us in our lives. He knows, he's watched you from the day you were born, and he knows the places of your weaknesses. He's not going to test you in areas where you are very strong in because he knows he doesn't, he's smart. He doesn't waste his time on things that don't produce any fruit. He Will, he will spend a, lot, a great deal of time when he knows that you're on a path that will bring favor, blessing, a path that would be uh, impactful to other people. And so Jesus, at this time, he was weak in the flesh as a, as a, as a human being. He was very hungry, just spent some tremendous time with God, and Satan starts kind of pushing the buttons a little bit and try to kind of test his faith and all that. And then Jesus, when he goes to the temple, he opens the scripture, and, and uh, they open the book, and what you just opened, Isaiah 61, is what they opened. It was his first message in his earthly ministry. And he says this in Isaiah 61, he says, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to those who are captive and the opening of prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all those who mourn in Zion, to console all those who mourn in Zion. I, and I, I don't think in the Gospels they accounted for the rest of it, but the, right about there they stop and Jesus said, uh, this, this scripture that we just read today has been fulfilled in your hearing. And that's how Jesus launched his earthly ministry. And we know all the works of Jesus. And you know, he came with a purpose. We celebrated Easter last week. Well, 
talking about the resurrection and the death and the resurrection of Christ. That's why he came. He didn't come just to do the miracles. That was a part of the story. But how many know there was a greater need for humanity? You know, sometimes we think when we live in our time, we, ex- we think the certain things that we deal with in 2024 are unique to us because maybe we, we've ad- advanced technologically, we know this and that, the world is a lot smaller than it used to be. But the issues that people have dealt with are the same from the beginning of time. There's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says that there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that has happened has already happened. And so you could just look back and find that that is true. Jesus came into an environment where people were dealing with issues just like we're dealing with issues now. How many deal with issues in their lives? Good. I'm I'm talking the right crowd then. That's good. That's good. We, We have issues. But you know, you look at the issues that Jesus pointed out here. Let me finish reading the scripture and then I'll go back and point out a couple of things here. He says, they're dealing with issues. People need to hear the good news. They need to hear the gospel. They need to hear the story of hope. They need to know that God loves them. They need to know that they are not alone, that if they can put their trust in God, He promises to never leave them. They need to know that no matter how far they have gone, no matter what messed up of a family situation they came in, when they come to Jesus, the Bible says that he who comes to Christ, behold, all things that have passed away and all things have become new. People need to know that the good news is that there is hope in Jesus Christ and He doesn't count he doesn't look at a book and says, oh, no, 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 you got to earn this. No, he did a perfect work on the cross. He did it all for us is to trust in him. That is the good news of the gospel. And Jesus came and declared, this is what I'm bringing to the world. I'm bringing good news to the world. You don't have to earn God's favor. He gives it freely. All you have to do, just like any other gift, is accept it. And say, I'll use it. That's great. Um, uh, my father-in-law had asked on my birthday. I know he asked, but he didn't tell me he asked because he didn't know what to get me. You know, when you're a kid, it's so easy to get gifts for kids because there's always something they need. And then as you get older, you kind of get what you want, right? And so you, there's always harder to, I'm, I don't know for you, it's hard to get gifts. And how many kind of ask, hey, wh- wh- what could he use? And he kind of went in a roundabout way. And... Uh, my wife says, hey, um, is there anything you want for your birthday? I'm like, you know, I could use a new coffee grinder. Because I can't find my old one because we've been moving for the last year. We are bad movers. Uh, Pastor Dustin is a pro mover. He knows how to move. He, just about every two minutes uh, when he remodels his house, his kids are saying, are we going to move again? Uh, I'm like... I'm not a pro mover. Don't call me to help you move. I, it, just, it would just be a failure here. I said, I need, I need a new, I, I could use a new coffee grinder because I've been using a blender to grind my coffee and I like it fresh. You know, you can find out. When you grow up in Africa, you know how to improvise. Some things work for more. You don't need a gadget for everything. One, you can make it work. We, we learn how to make things work. And so... <clears throat> I got the coffee grinder, and now some of you, you can't wake up if you haven't had your coffee, and you're really having a hard time even following this message if you haven't had your coffee yet. But some of us, we wake up to drink coffee. We, are not, we don't need coffee to wake up, yeah. <laughs> and that coffee grinder, it was nice, but it's just, don't tell him this if he came here. <laughs> it's just not cutting it. But I'm not giving it back. I don't know, it's just not cutting it. Maybe I drink too much coffee in the morning. Um, but with, with any gift, we have a choice to accept it or not. Salvation is a free gift of God. You do not have to pay for it. No amount of religious compensation or adding up my good works with my bad works, at least God can, is a fair God, he'll see that I'm way gooder than I am better sometimes. And just let me in. No. 
whosoever will put their trust in Jesus Christ. He will wipe away your sins. No matter how hard of a life you've lived, no matter how bad, you might be the baddest in Lincoln, Nebraska, it doesn't matter. At the foot of the cross, we accept the gift of God through faith in our hearts in the accomplished work of Jesus Christ. That's what he came. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to announce and to proclaim the good news. And that is the most important thing that each one of us can have in our lives. But you know, like many of us, when we accept Jesus, some, we don't die right away. We still have to live into this, in this messed up world. There's a guy on this cross, the first salvation recorded after the, during the crucifixion of Jesus, the two guys who are criminals that were being crucified with Jesus. One of them could not stand Jesus. In fact, he mocked him. He says, if you, you've been talking all high about how you and God are connected, yeah, if you are who you say you are, why don't you help yourself now? You're dying here just like a criminal. Why don't you help yourself? And the other guy looks at Jesus, the humble heart, and says, I know that you're not like me. And um, when you go where you, you go, please don't forget about me. Now, that was not a polished prayer of salvation written down from a theologian and a great world evangelist that says, said this prayer after me. He didn't even know what the scriptures, uh, my guess is that he didn't even know what the scriptures said. But his heart was humble towards God. And he goes, I know I'm not perfect. I know I've done some stuff. And I know you don't deserve to be here. I know that you are perfect. Uh, I, I, he, in his own way, he spoke with his heart and God heard the prayer of his heart. And Jesus said to him, today, today, you will be with me in paradise. He didn't get a chance to get baptized. He didn't get a chance to get to learn the scriptures. He didn't get a chance to get a, a Christian community to grow. No, no, no. But God says, today, you will be with me in paradise. But that's not the case for everyone. You could have an amazing experience. Even the guys today, I just can feel the presence of God in that water. I was telling those guys, man, I came in and tested the waters. I've learned to do this before, and it was nice and warm. I said, this is, this is high-class uh, baptism. <laughs> we like to be comfortable. This one year, we had baptism here, and it was in the winter. And I, yeah, someone knows exactly what happened. This thing takes like 12 hours to get warm. And I was in that tank for a long time. And uh, we, one, we had forgotten to turn it on early enough. It wasn't my fault. Somebody else's. <laughs> and we're in there like, man, so God is doing some supernatural things. You come in, you feel a touch of the Holy Ghost. The moment you step in, whoo, I feel God in here. <laughs> and then God done, so full of God and so cold. I found out I left my bag of change of clothes at home. Now talk about just the terror. Yeah, I have never forgotten that. There are some things you do only once in your life, and it never happens again. But, you know, those guys are feeling awesome and everything today, feeling God's presence in their life, being affirmed by their family, cheered on by the whole church, and it's amazing but then you got to go to school, you got to go to work, you got to go home. And there are people that are not as awesome and filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit that are surrounded with our lives, and they'll test some things out of you. All right, I'm preaching better right now. <clears throat> but that's when really, that's when we really now our faith and study in Jesus Christ begins to count. Because now I'm rising to walk in newness of life. This exact scenario had happened to me before. 
I will give him a piece of my mind and they'll know not to do it again. But now I'm not going to react to what happens to me and what's done to me but rather I'm going to trust Jesus Christ in the process because God knows even the good things that are done in secret when you're not being rewarded for your goodness and the things that you do. God knows and He is a diligent God. He is faithful and He knows He's keeping good books. I don't have to defend myself every single time. I don't have to fight every single time. I don't have to have the last word. I'm going to trust God in this situation. And I'm going to keep my cool, steady in Christ. I'm, I'm going to put my faith in Christ. He knows that through the world, he says, he preached good tidings to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Because when you look at the masses of people all around the world, so many people's hearts have been broken through many different situations. You get in bad relationships, your heart gets broken. Your hearts get broken as a child sometimes through no fault of your own. You just happen to be born in that family. And you're starting a life with broken heart even before you committed to loving anybody. This awful broken world is full of people who are hurt deeply. And one person put it this way, that hurt people hurt people. I'm not excusing people for wrong behavior. And God is not excusing people for wrong behavior. But you can also allow the Lord Jesus Christ to heal your broken heart if you trust him with your heart. I like that song on Christmas. The last Christmas, I gave you my heart. (laughs) The very next day, you took it away. This year... And spreading the, hey, I'm giving it to someone. And some of the, I'm not giving it to anybody. This has been hurts way too much. I'm going to be closed up. You might not be able to trust people anymore. But the good news is this. You can trust the Lord with your heart. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to set the captives free. He came to bring hope to a hopeless world. And the Bible says this, that he that the Son of God has set free is free indeed. If you feel the void of your heart with things of this world or try to find what only God can give out of people, Trying to, trying to find happiness through people. Trying to find your identity through the validations of others. You will be disappointed over and over again. And I feel sorry for your poor soul because that poor broken soul will be broken over and over again. And you will be filled with many grief. But when a heart and a person finds their identity in Jesus Christ, when they find who they are, the essence of who they are in the loving arms of God. You will be secure, you will be restored, and you will not just find happiness in your life. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord will fill your heart. You see, happiness is temporary and momentarily based on circumstances. And, you know, I'm happy when I'm doing well, when my business is doing well, when my family is doing well, when we all gather. That's happiness, and it's good to be happy. But what God wants for all of us is not just happiness that is temporary, that can be circumstantial and affected by others. God wants to put a joy in your heart that only can come by an encounter of the Holy Spirit in your life that gives you peace and satisfaction and contentment, even in difficult times, you're able to just put one step at another because your trust is not in anything else. You find your security in God. When you're going through trials and tribulation, you're holding on to the faith in the Lord and saying, I know that the plans that I have concerning you is what God says. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and to give you a hope. I can trust God through difficulty and have hope even through hard times. And in good times, I'm not too proud of myself. I give credit where credit is due. I thank God for the blessings that he's given me in my life. Good news. 
Bro- heal the brokenhearted. Jesus came to make us complete. You will never, ever, ever be complete in your life if you don't entrust your life to the Lord. It says in verse 4, in verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of mercy. And you ask, Pastor Solo, you ask us to sing out loud, to clap our hands, to shout for joy. Are we rising up emotions here in the church? It's fine. You can, uh, you can uh, rise up emotion in praise to the Lord. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But there's something about free praise offered to the Lord that brings joy. There's something about praise that shakes off the heaviness of our heart. You could be, have come here today and nobody, you can't even share what's going through you because it's so much and so heavy. But when you release everything to God, there's a scripture that says, come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. It's, a, it's an entry point into the presence of God. Because now I'm saying, I know this is going on right now. I just got a diagnosis that's very scary. I know things are messed up at work right now. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills because the price of everything seems to have tripled. Every day you come in, it's like, I thought this was this much. And I, I feel stressed out. And that's the reality of what I'm facing in my life. But for a moment now, I'm not going to focus on my trials. I'm not going to focus on my difficulties. I'm going to focus my intention, my mind, my heart, the essence of who I am, to look for those things that I can be thankful for right now. And I'm not going to do it in silence. I'm going to tell the Lord openly that I'm grateful to Him. I'm going to say to the Lord openly, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me well. Thank you, Lord, for a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, for the good things you have shown me. Thank you, Lord, for being patient with me. How many know they need that sometimes? I know he's been patient with me so many times. Like, God, how can you be patient with this one guy this this long? I say, just I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being patient with me. And so this is when, that's called the garment of praise. And you won't be, you won't believe the heavenly transaction that takes place when we truly praise the Lord with sincere hearts, outstretched arms, praising God, letting all the members in our faculty, as much as it depends on us, just purposing to say, God, I'm not gonna rob you of the praise that are due to your name. I'm not gonna let the rocks cry out in my place. I'm going to cry out to the Lord. I am going to thank God. I'm not going to be ashamed of you in the congregation of the righteous. I'm not going to be ashamed of you in the congregation of the unrighteous. I'm not going to be ashamed of you before men. I will speak of your goodness as long as I live. I will, I will give you praise. And the Bible says that sometimes you will just, re, you will not, it's a supernatural transaction. As our praises go up, the Bible says the presence of the Lord falls down. And then God replaces our spirit of heaviness with what the Bible calls unspeakable joy. I have no reason to ex- rationally to explain why I feel so happy or why I feel so content. Because if you look at the mess in my life, I should be very sad right now. But I'm not. Because God has all enveloped my life with the glory of his presence. And now the things that are so strong, the thing that seems so big... All of a sudden, in the light of his glory, they look smaller and smaller. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for his wonderful 
face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Because your perspective changes in his presence. And yes, you might be dealing with financial difficulty. Yes, you might be dealing with a relational mess. Yes, you might be dealing with insecurities. Yes, you might be dealing with a diagnosis that you don't know what to do with. But yet, in the presence of God the Creator, under His safe arms, you feel secure and you know that it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. God is good that way. I read a very sad story this week of a young lady in the Netherlands that is 28 years old, been dealing with um, anxiety and different mental health issues, been seeing a professional for a while, and the person she's been seeing got to a point and said, I just, we don't know what else to do because there's nothing medically that I can do to help you. And so she said, okay, I get what you're saying. I've made a decision in my life and uh, apply for medically as assisted suicide. That, that's what I call. It, I was broken. My heart was broken because there's so many people are doing that these days. And where countries allow for that, it gets perpetuated. In the Netherlands right now, they say 5% of deaths are people that have chosen to be taken away. And I thought, wow, what a sad, sad situation. But a young lady that's healthy on other physical sense, and I'm not putting down, diminishing um, those who are dealing with mental issue, illness, and it's a real issue. Yes. But to not have hope at that age speaks of something much deeper than material needs, much deeper than even medical, what the medical needs could provide for. But it speaks something that goes to the depth of our heart. And it's precisely what Jesus is talking about here. He says he's coming to heal the brokenhearted and those who are bound to set them free. He is a deliverer. I've been a witness of the Lord's supernatural deliverance. I've shared about my story and my family uh, <laughs> with those that have had known me for a while. And I remember being in a place of despair as a teenager. Our family was a mess at the time. And as a kid, you start looking and thinking, man, what's going to happen of our lives? What's going to happen here? Are, are we just doomed now? Is it, is, are things ever going to change? And I remember when the Lord, I met the Lord and started having hope for my future and have hope for my family. And if we were growing up. At the time when I came to Christ as a teenager in Nairobi, Kenya, it was uh, not only... It was also a time of great economic depression. And I remember it was 1991 where inflation hit 100% in one month. Like you went to the store to buy well, well, the most common thing that people buy every single day in Kenya is fresh bread and fresh milk. Because uh, traditionally you drink bread uh, and, and chai for breakfast with maybe eggs or some side meat and stuff, but everybody is a staple. So you know the price of the fresh bread and milk every morning. And when that inflation hit that hard, it was like you go and the prices were double overnight. And, and it would continue to a period of, when I read about the Great Depression stories and stuff, it was very similar to what we were experiencing back then. And so... In the middle of all that, um, everybody's kind of surviving, and it's hitting, hard, it's hitting really hard on people. Uh, young people, getting a job was so hard for, a young pass for young people especially, because the older people that are in the workforce, they're holding on. If you have a job, you're, you're keeping that job. If they want you to show up early 15 minutes, you'll be there 45 minutes early, because everybody's hanging on to what they have. And, um, but you could graduate from college, you could have master's degrees, and you would not get a job. They were just not there. And so, 
And in the middle of all that, I remember the Lord opening up a, a door for me to get employment. And it was just unbelievable where I grew so much and I got a job in the middle of that. I knew there is absolutely no way if it wasn't for the goodness of the Lord that I would have had anything. I, and, but God was so good at even in those moments. He is faithful and he takes care of his people no matter what is going on in the world. He only desires and asks of us to trust him. To trust him. You trust him with your life. Trust him with your family. Trust him with your finances. Trust him with your health. Trust him in your future. The only thing that the Lord requires of us is faith and trust in him. My trust is not in people. My trust is in the Lord. When I look back even years later, and I think, wow, where would I be had it not been for the goodness of the Lord? Where would I be had it not been for the goodness of the Lord? He is so good. We sang about that. We know, I know we're going through economic hard times right now. If you don't know that, then you have, you got your eyes closed a little bit. It's tough for a lot of people to make ends meet because the prices of everything is elevated. Everything is elevated. But even then, God is faithful. In fact, some of the most amazing miracles that we've come to love from the scriptures and the stories that we are told in the Bible actually come through hard times. In hard times, we begin to put our trust in God. And when we put our trust in God, you know what happens? We grow. So sometimes God permits hard times so that we can be drawn back to not relying on ourselves by relying on him. I want us to stand together and pray today of our lives and of our families to make a purpose in our hearts that we are choosing to trust God with our lives today. Putting your trust in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your presence now. Thank you for your presence now, Lord. You said when we call on you, that you will answer us, oh God, your word says. That you will show us great and mighty things, things that are unknown to us. We pray with that expectation. We pray with that expectation that you would watch over your word, that you may perform it in our lives. And so we call on you with an expectation that you will do great things among us, oh God. I pray for people who have been going through hardships right now. I ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, that the good news of the Lord's blessing will come upon their lives. That good breaks are coming to people who haven't had wins in a long time. I pray for wins, wins, and wins, and wins that come from the hand of God into the lives of your people. I thank you now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel right now to pray for those who are dealing with mental illness, those who are dealing with anxiety, all sorts of things. Just you're feeling the weight. Today, God is setting you free. Today, there is an answer to prayer. Today, there is a miraculous touch of the Holy Spirit that's going to come to relieve you. It doesn't have to go through a process. God can touch you today and make a difference in your life. There is a miracle working power that's the anointing of the Holy Spirit to set you free. I want every eyes closed. This is not to embarrass you or anything, but I want you to stretch your hand in faith and say, pray for me because I want the Lord to touch you today and give you relief. Lord, you know the hands of those who are raised are saying, Lord, touch me, touch me. You said you came, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Your word says that the anointing will break every yoke. God, you know the things that make us suffer, the things that are, we are struggling with, the things that we are dealing with. We know, Jesus, that you are alive 
And I pray right now for a fresh release of the anointing of the Lord into their minds, into their hearts. And we pray in the name of Jesus, burning everything that holds them back. And I pray for the freedom to come upon their minds that they are no longer tormented and troubled by this pain in their minds. I pray for a release of the power of the Holy Spirit to set them free in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of God that was alive 2,000 years ago and is alive right now in this room to make us whole. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Receive the joy. Receive your peace. Receive your freedom. Receive your anointing in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, it's good. I want to pray one more prayer, and we'll take communion before we go home. But you keep your eyes closed, too, in one other prayer. Maybe you've never put your trust in Jesus. You've never given your hearts to the Lord. You've never been born again in your life. And you say, Lord, I want you in my life. Everybody has. You have to make a choice. God never forces you. But if you open your heart to him, he will come in. He wants to bless you today. And if you want a prayer, or say, Pastor Solo, I want to make a commitment to follow Christ with my life. Pray for me. I'm going to pray for you now. And maybe you say, Pastor Solo, I have followed Christ before, but I veered away. And I need a fresh start with God today. Pray for me. This prayer is going to be for both of you. So if you would just kind of honor God's presence right now, I'm going to invite all of us to just close our eyes for a moment. And let these guys just kind of say that to God. I'm going to ask you to also stretch your hand and just wave. I'm, I have my eyes open. That's your faith saying, I want to, yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Just wait. Thank you, sir. I say, thank you, ma'am. I see your hand. You can put it down. And the Lord sees your heart. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. I'm going to lead us into this collective prayer. All of us can pray with those who raise their hand before God. And just, it's a very simple prayer. But I want you to pray sincerely for God looks at your heart. Say, dear God, I come to you today just as I am. God, I know that I'm a sinner and I need you in my life. Today, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I put my trust in Jesus as my Savior, as my Lord, as I devote my life to you. I ask you that you give me the strength to follow you. Protect me and fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. God sees your heart. He says, man, look at what's outside, but God looks at the intention of the heart. And today, the, heavens in, in heaven, the angels in heaven are rejoicing for your decision to commit your life to Christ. And we rejoice with you. We rejoice with you. I'm going to have Pastor Darcy and Sam here lead us. In prayer, we can start with the bread now. Mm -hmm. All right, praise you, Father. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for what this bread represents. Lord, as your word says, that it represents your broken body mm -hmm. that on the cross that day. It was broken for us, oh God. Lord, it says that um, you were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. But thank you, Father, that you have healed us, oh God. Yes, Lord. That that broken body represents our healing. Thank Lord, you, even Lord. as Pastor Solo just prayed a minute ago for, for those just suffering through right now with those mental health things. Father, you have come to even heal that and say that it is finished. Lord, when you yes. said it, it is finished, mm -hmm. it is finished. Thank you, Lord, Lord, you have already taken it to the grave. You took that on and have defeated it already. Thank so you, for Lord. those, Lord, right now that need a touch of the miraculous, whatever that may be, in their family, in relationships, in the body, in the mind, in the spirit. Today, oh God, is a day of healing. Yes, Lord. Lord, and we declare it. Lord, and, and even as we just sang it a minute ago, your word, you said, that you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Father, where our mind goes to the miracle, you take it even farther. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and we just thank you for that, and we thank you for your body that was thank broken you, again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen and amen. Let's take the bread together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's hold the cup, guys. Let's hold the cup. Thank you, Lord, as we hold this cup together right now, we are thankful for what it is. 
represents your shed blood, O oh God. He said that your blood was shed for the remission of sins, that we are washed clean. And as we stand here, O oh God, it is because of the blood that we have access to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your we pray, O oh God, even as we share this together today, we recognize what you have done for us. Thank you, Lord. Oh God, that you have given us access to, to the very presence. throne of God, mm. where we find mercy and we find grace in to help us in time of need. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus, that it gives us power over sin. Lord. It gives us power in this world to overcome. He said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. We thank you for the blood that was shed for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Let's you, take Lord. the cup together. Thank you, Lord. Hey, if you guys just prayed that prayer that Pastor Solo led us in, we want to know from you. Again, down in the description link down below, it talks about if you prayed this prayer of salvation. We want to hear from you. We want to send you some materials that are going to help you with that walk of faith and that new walk of faith. And one of the really awesome things is hearing this word today reminds us of that walk of faith, right? I love the message, the salvation message, because it is the good news. There's a reason that the Bible calls it the good news. And I'm so thankful for it. Yes, and we are believing mm -hmm. with you that as you go about your day and your week that God's blessings follow you. Mm -hmm. We speak healing over you, restoration of relationships, blessing in your finances, and we believe that our mighty God has in his hand everything that you need. We'll see you next time.
the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better